everybody welcome back to the flannel channel and uh yeah today i'm under the hood of the truck again because i had a breakdown again this time it's a fuel leak and uh yeah not good but it's got a good story stick around i'll tell you about it So let me try and explain to you what what happened here. So I was uh, stopped for fuel mid morning and uh, went inside to pay for my diesel and came back out and I noticed a puddle right in the center underneath the truck, right around the bell housing area, and it was dripping. I'm like, what the world is that? At first I thought maybe it was air conditioning, but my AC wasn't on. It's a beautiful day today, and uh, so uh, pulled into the lot, checked it out, and sure enough, smelled it as fuel and. Uh, poked around and I could tell that I had a fuel leak up here around the back side of my cylinder head and it's this return line that comes off the back of the rear cylinder head comes around and returns tees into the front return line of the front head and then goes back to the fuel tanks well it's got a teeny teeny tiny little pinhole I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera but rub through just enough and uh, what I think caused it is this uh, this bracket insulator thing here was just loose enough that everything could kind of move and rattle and buzz around so um, more good news is that I wasn't too far from the hometown and the truck still runs fine it actually was leaking more because it was at idle when most of the fuel was being returned so when I was driving it really wasn't returning much at all and I'm loaded so anyway good news there's not a whole lot of mess all over the truck I was able to get to kind of our, our home lot here. It's not at the shop, but um, I had uh, some simple tools with me, got that old line off. And then <clears throat> I happened to be just maybe three blocks from my friend's auto repair shop. It's a shop where I used to work and actually my oldest son, uh, Jacob, is working there right now. So anyway, I went and talked to him and said, Brett, here's what I got. He's like, you know what, here. He dug through uh, a bin of fuel line, brake lines, things like that. Toss me an extra spare nut and uh, the tools that I needed in order to cut and flare, uh, put the bends in it with, uh, with the, the tubing bender. And it's not exact, but that's pretty darn close to being, being the same. That's, that's gonna get us right where we need to go. And uh, new insulator so that it's gonna fix the problem permanently and uh, shouldn't rub through anymore so uh, I'll show you kind of back in here where it was leaking kind of right up back in that corner where the the fuel line makes a 90 degree bend and then connects up to my return line so yeah just reaching around the back of the head and uh, took it off piece of cake so I'm gonna put this thing back on we're gonna get fired up and uh, finish the day so I'm really really grateful for good friends like Brett and uh, the fact that he was willing to loan me his tools that he had a uh, piece like this that I needed just laying around in the scrap bin and uh, had the tools with me quick easy fix and uh, it's a beautiful day you know I'm not on the side of the road it's not raining it's not 20 below and uh, it's something pretty simple I can fix myself so thankful for a lot of those things so Momentarily, we'll get back on the road. There we go. All right, so my new line is installed, wraps around, and then goes to a 90 on the back side of the cylinder head. And I made sure that uh, nothing is touching or rubbing in any way. Got my new bracket on there. Everything's nice and secure. I even made sure and wrapped a little bit of rubber. I know you can't see it very well. A little bit of rubber between the two fuel lines back there where they kind of crisscross just to give myself extra insurance that they don't, you know, rub against each other. There was some air gap between them, but, you know, just to make sure, just to make sure. So, find out with me if I actually fix this thing correctly. So let's hit the key and check for leaks. Here we go. This thing's got three, almost three million miles on it, and I'm not the first guy to... Squeaky ball! 
Not the first guy to mess with this thing. I think we got it that's awesome and you know obviously with a truck with this many miles on it I'm certainly not the first guy that's messed with these fuel lines before and things have been moved and changed and over time vibration heat breakage zip ties you know all the stuff that comes with an old truck you got to be willing to get dirty sometimes and you know, I might have missed out on a load here today or something like that, but the good news is we're all fixed up and uh, back on track. Also, I don't know about you guys, but my favorite TV show is uh, Roadkill, and sometimes I love Roadkill. Like two days ago, I had a power steering hose leak on me, and because I didn't want to wreck the pump, I had to go to Napa and get a new hose put a, or a new end put on the hose. So it's just part of trucking part of being old school and working on stuff yourself and you know just carry tools and figure it out and uh, huge thank you to my friends like Brett willing to help me out and get me back on the road again so anyway quick short episode but I got to get back to it it's just part of the day and uh, glad you could come along appreciate each one of you uh, I don't see the comments here on uh, on YouTube but uh, you can interact with me on Instagram it's at flannel underscore Philip and uh, we can chit chat there if you want to but uh, it's incredible to me sometimes how many of you like this kind of content and watch what's going on it's just everyday stuff but glad you dig it thanks again everybody peace and grease Yep, Mongo Hood. Yeah. Let me try that again.